All right, it is 9.26 a.m. on a Friday, and guess what? I just checked with Fidelity, and I still can't trade there. That really freaking sucks. I look forward to trading when I'm able to, um, but I'm going to hope to God that when I'm able to trade, finally, OTCs again. I don't do anything stupid because I spent a whole week without really trading it, so now that I'm able to, that day, I freak out and I do some stupid crap because I can trade again right like some kind of an addict right who's like not able to do the thing that they're addicted to and then once they get it they overdose I don't want to do that all right I want to be just a regular guy who is finally able to trade when that is available but I am interested in raising my um, my dollar risk level on morning panic balance play setups if um, you know everything works out nothing catastrophic happens with um, trading fidelity you know as my new broker so that means I can still trade obviously listed stocks with Schwab here and um, you know the money went through on interactive brokers but of course because they have 50,000 hoops I don't know how to trade OTCs there because they have that unbundled commissions thing is is not available for light accounts which I have no clue what that means. That money is already there and I withdrew most of it. I'm going to leave some for the potential that it can be used, um, that Interactive Brokers account for shorting listed stocks, if that's a thing, because they don't, I don't, they don't really charge commissions on listed stocks, just OTCs um, per share. And I think that will be ideal if that is possible. If not, that's totally fine as well so i'm gonna probably put up td immediate trade the paper trading thing i made in theory 20 bucks yesterday paper trading um p-u-g-e i'm gonna open that up and i'm gonna pretend to trade otc setups you know with that paper trading account and hopefully i think monday fidelity should have enough time to freaking confirm um everything is good to go so that's all I have for right now, and I will make an update and see if there's any setups I could trade, uh, paper trade, or maybe actually trade with listed stocks. All right, it is 9:37 a.m., and in theory, I made 70 bucks paper trading, uh, PUGE morning panic bounce play. Not a real perfect case scenario morning panic bounce play because. Um, the previous close was 54 as you can tell the right there so you know you see this and you think oh it went down from 60 all the way to 50 that is some nice range well not really because the close was 54 which means it had like a gap up spike up whatever I've learned of this already with CYBL this is like a fake morning panic bounce play but not completely fake because it did actually drop from 54 to 50 which is just about 10% and you know i was in in theory let's see if i can figure how to navigate through this all right so i was in okay that was yes no that was today yeah i think the data is just off on td media trade because this is like um you know a paper trade account but in theory i got in um that's a high limit of 60 so when I click the buy the ask thing I'm not trying to get filled at 60 that would be insane but um, you know by the asking I don't know why did that pop up by the ask in theory just meant um, at the time which was at 934 right about here was 52 and I did get filled 250 shares trading a $100 risk level at 52 so in theory if I were to have broken 50 and I got out at 48 that would have been roughly a hundred dollar loss I'll go over it and confirm I did that appropriately and then at 935 I was trying to sell just five uh, not five fifty thousand shares because it was having a nice uptrend and I just wanted to get some off the table you know in theory just in case you know it might fail and this is all it can do right but I was not able to get out because when I click the sell the bid for some reason it throws the order at 60 which is obviously crazy the same price that when I clicked you know um, by the ask it, it was it shot up to 60 and now it got filled at 52 because that's where it was really trading but 
again it's not you know completely legit because this is a paper trading account and you know I tried twice to do that right to sell when it was at 935 again in this candle and then I thought all right let's just get everything out because it doesn't seem like it's gonna really play out appropriately I was you know still lucky that it had a nice uptrend you know in 936 you know still trying to play off of this 54 level so I guess I placed a sell order and I got the rest you know out at 54 and I profitably you know in paper trading land made 70 bucks even if TD immediate trade were to charge commissions like $14 I'm still profitable there it might actually be accurate uh, maybe I don't know but in theory I made 70 bucks doing that which it will be cool again simulated trading I don't have 200 G's um, in TD immediate trade so that's the case there and it looks like it wasn't trying to do much more because a big seller showed up at 55 I believe and there were still people selling at 54 so it didn't look too nice but you know this could actually what it can do now is make a further panic and actually make a bottom and play off of that I might try to trade that and let's just see if I did do my risk reward 250,000 shares I got in at 52 $1,300 worst case I'm out at 48 yeah that's perfect a hundred dollar you know risk level I did that perfectly which is great if I'm gonna paper trade I'm gonna at least paper trade trading a larger size which to be honest is you know the same I mean obviously not the same because it's a paper trading account but the same as how I've been trading with a $30 risk level just selling in pieces is not like oh yeah I made this amount or I bought this amount it's just trading the dollar risk level and that's it the way I've traded is the same way which feels nice because even though this is a paper trading account in theory that's how I'm gonna scale up it's just the same foundation that I've created you know trading an eight dollar fifteen dollar and, and a thirty dollar risk level just you know sure bigger numbers it's easier to fat finger something and maybe buy too much or sell too much but you know that 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 is the case there I think that is really good um, unfortunately sure I couldn't have actually have traded real money here um, with fidelity today but that's totally fine and I think that was great just seeing that you know even though on paper train again it's the same process that I've taught myself you know selling in multiple pieces um, just trying to nail a level 2 reversal or just playing off of a certain level doing my dollar risk level and I was able to do that so yeah I'm pretty happy with that I'll just continue to watch PUGE the only thing I don't like about this and another thing that I took into consideration is that VWAP was pretty close when it was at 54 you know by 53 it just was kinda iffy with the way that it was already above VWAP right which was so close to the bottom of the uptrend AURI didn't do anything because they didn't have good volume CYBL nothing here ILUS um, yeah it was just trading weird it didn't do anything really nice nothing here with AABB I'll make an update later to see if anything nice pops up if PUGE can do like a follow-up panic with considerable volume that would be nice too um, another paper trade there with a hundred dollar risk level literally felt the same as when I was paper trading with you know a thirty dollar risk level which I think is cool but I'll just again try to take it easy when I can finally trade um, OTCs again on fidelity god willing all right, it is 10:08 a.m. and I had a real trade, <laughs> but not an OTC um, stock, a listed stock. So obviously, I'm a lot worse with listed stocks, and I trade with a tiny four-dollar risk level that I didn't even play off of very um, perfectly, just because um, I'll go over my thoughts. So BFRI, you know, had this nice run from five to six so that's a lot of range I think that's something that you can you know comfortably um, play with I mean you know that kind of move is like 20 percent right so if you know there's 20 percent in the move you know there's something that you can trade off of and maybe not do perfectly but you know still be profitable 
It had this little thing here. This could be like the head of an inverse head and shoulder, shoulder, head, and then it has a big spike towards V web, which would be super ideal in the sixes. And then, you know, maybe it makes a shoulder in the future, but um, it's just nerve wracking because listed stocks can have a big red candle like this. It flashes and just wipes out the entire thing and then say goodbye to your dollar risk level because you know you risked a level and it just ripped right through it and it just you know blew up but um you know i probably sold everything too early like a chicken as usual but i mean this is listed stocks i have less experience with listed stocks so i'm not going to be too hard on myself but this is actually trying to make a move let's see if it can actually like hold 560 and make a move towards the upside that would be pretty impressive but it just seems like there were just too many people dumping their shares and i just didn't like that feeling you know it is a stock that ran not too long ago so there might be bag holders especially when you consider the fact that there was a massive amount of volume trade at this day right here so there could be plenty of people who were in this day with a whole bunch of shares as well as this day really and the third day of course it has this downtrend there you know maybe their average is at seven dollars it goes all the way to 381 they're crying and now today's like an uptrending day and now all those people are very interested in selling you know out of their positions after they were just really down at one point when it was trading in the three dollar range but this one is actually trying to do the move it's just very nerve-wracking the way listed stocks trade but i'm glad i was in the right um you know i traded like a setup i was on the right track but i could have obviously held this one better but why did i get in this so it's not just like a potential head of an inverse head and shoulders again shoulder here's the head I, I, an ideal spike again towards v wipe it makes a shoulder later but i also liked how it was just a support level looking at this chart right here um i believe yeah when you go to the 540s it was like you know here it was resistance right here it was support here it was resistance so it just seems like it was playing off of this level that was very important looking at this chart nothing's really significant looking at a daily chart but you know with a 15 minute chart going over the entire move since it first had its first run right here it just looked like it was trying to hold support playing off of the 540s again so you know when it was downtrending and then it looked like it was going to actually try holding the 540s level because they could have just broken under it like that you know just just however it wants <laughs> well, this thing's already downtrending let's see if the more times i think it tests the support level the weaker the stock is but my entry was at 10.04 right here 1004 this candle when it just had this downtrend and it looked like it was trying to hold support right i was in at 1004 i wasn't gonna chase this thing i was kind of upset because when i saw this thing downtrend and then it had this green candle i thought uh oh what if it's just gonna be like a one minute reversal right and i was like well you know that sucks but if it comes back to the level you know and holds support it might be something that i should take but if it's just gonna do a one minute spike I'm not going to chase that. So, you know, it looked like it was going to do something. It got to 553. And then it kind of got back, you know, near the same level here at 1004, which is when I got in. Five shares. Whoop de doo. $20 position. Uh, <laughs> $20 position at 544. My entry was right here. Why just five shares? Because. You know, five shares at 5.44 is a $27 position. Worst case scenario, I'm in at 10.04, right? And because of my lack of confidence with listed stocks, the thing takes a dump, big wreck, candle flashes, panda no, like just, just, just like a pandemic going on. Everything is just falling off a cliff, right? Big red candle. Obviously, that's how scared I trade it. It breaks five dollars, which is my ideal risk level. And then if we account for slippage on top of that, four eighty. So twenty-seven dollars, right? Four eighty, twenty-four, twenty-seven. It's about three dollars. Pretty close to my, you know, that's not it. Five forty-four. Pretty close to my four-dollar risk level. I, in theory, I traded a three-dollar and twenty-cent risk level, but again. 
the same way I traded this is the same way I might trade with 500 shares, right? It's the same process, if you ask me. Especially on listed stocks, because you can easily get in and out with the liquidity. And so, yeah, that was the idea there. I was in it, and this candle, once, you know, it held support, it made a little uptrend, so it showed some strength, but it didn't, you know, just do something crazy and keep going. It kind of came back a little, and I got in at 544. I sold two shares at 10.05 right here, 10.05 at uh, 552 when I just saw that it was starting to work, you know, just wanted to play it safe and get some shares out if in case, you know, it breaks. Um, in theory, it didn't just fall off a cliff immediately, so at that point, I would have gotten out of the trade 100% probably um, with this level right here if it were to have broken that. I would have gotten out, but, you know, when I immediately get in the setup, I'm just putting that you know dollar risk level and everything if I were to get in and then you know the list of stock does the classic red candle and it just flashes right that's that's what I account for and that's why you know you might be wondering why I had such a very wide risk level but that's just the way I feel comfortable trading so I sold two shares there I sold one share at 556 that was 1006 right here when it looks like it was starting to work but just just one share, right? Because I want to still hold some shares left, but you know, in case this is the most it's going to do, at least I sold some shares there. And then I ultimately got out at 10.08, which was right here. Yeah, right here in this crazy candle. I got out at 5.53 because uh, it just had that, you know, uptrend here. And then I thought, oh, is it really going to come back? Um, yeah, I did come back, you know, um, near the bonds, but I also came back to the highs and broke the highs here. And I got to, you know, the 569 level. And it's still holding the 540s. I don't like how long it's taking, but I do like how it's maybe like right here, a baby higher low off of this range right here. You know, the lowest 543 here, the lowest, you know, 537-ish. It just had an uptrend. This could be a higher low, and this could be the move that makes a, uh, you know, move towards six dollars. It could totally do it, and I'm just probably hesitating here, or you know, just 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 gonna watch it. I don't want to, you know, just trade too much and do something dumb and start seeing things that you know might not be true. But that was the ideal setup there, and I made I don't know like forty-seven cents. So. Not very much, obviously, because I traded a $20 something position, $27. But um, I'll make an update and see if this thing holds the 540s and ever makes a move towards the upside. It could still be an inverse head and shoulder, shoulder, a large head, which isn't ideal. So there's less odds that it could work out. Nice spike, does the shoulder again. Um, as I mentioned, that could totally happen. I like how I traded this I just wish that maybe I would still be holding one share right now and allow that to be the thing that I sell if it breaks at 537 or the thing that I sell in the sixes profitably I just don't like the idea of being in a setup like this I'm selling in pieces and then big red candle I sell the last two shares you know after it broke and I'm red you know it just sounds so dumb so I think when it comes to that, I could just try holding one share, but it's just nerve-wracking for me to trade these things, listed stocks, but it's trying to do it right here. I'll, I'll make another recording and we'll see what this thing can do, if it works out or not. It is 1041 and this is an update, so my in and out trade was right about there at that range my last sell was at 1008 so again I was in I believe this candle I got out of my last position here the last piece of my position and it did hold this level here but then it it did make like a lower low a baby lower low but it still held the 540s which is a level to play off of it this is the time where it actually worked out you know it just took let's see this was in one bounce right here the second tiny one I guess you can call them you know both here the second run up that actually played out I was on the right track obviously I just traded it right here immediately you know it could have worked out because it could have been like quick volatility quick bounce back towards the highs but I guess you know the stock isn't trading that spicy today so 
that was the thing here. It ultimately made that move from the 540s. It got to 583. It didn't get to VWAP, which would have been goal, obviously. But, you know, when VWAP is downtrending, it also means that maybe it won't necessarily get that high anyway. But this could be an inverse head and shoulders. Shoulder, head, shoulder. Not perfect because the head isn't necessarily lower than the shoulder. But it looks like one, right? So it could also be a setup where you just take another long position and you risk... I would probably move the risk now to 530, just flat out 530. And if it worst case scenario doesn't work out, I'm out at 5, you know, because there's slippage or something crazy, right? A big red candle just flashes and wipes people out. Um, the only thing you can't really protect for with the way I put a risk level is if it were to just get an offering and just halts or something like that, so... Let's just calculate in theory what would that be. So, you know, I'd be in maybe right now at 553. I get out. Um, if it breaks again, this level right here, I'd say 530 once again. Worst case, I'm at 5. So, 553, the 5, so that's 25. That's about $3. So, maybe I can throw in six shares if I feel fancy, right? $30 becomes. 30 actually then I can throw more shares actually that brings it closer and I think that's too far 35 that's actually pretty close to that four dollar risk level you know I could be in and you know see if maybe this thing can do that shoulder right VWAP is trying to hold it's not down training anymore it's trying to hold this range so it might not be too bad. The only issue is that this thing can obviously just fall off a cliff and that would suck. But it looks like it might try to do it right here and I just went over a setup. You know, the trade. I don't like how there's always like more people at the ask. But this thing can play out and I'm just too chicken because you know, um, I'm not really that good with listed stocks, and this thing could also do what it did here, where it looks like it's trying to bounce here, uptrends a little bit, and then it makes a lower low, right? And then, you know, um, I'd be upset because, you know, it's not right when I got in the setup, but it looks like it's trying to do it right now. Inverse head and shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder. And then the neckline, a level of resistance would be 569-ish, give or take. Of course, here, 75, and then... 83 and of course the goal I would absolutely be out at uh, 595 if it were to get that high you know at VWAP or maybe it just gets slightly below VWAP the way it did here but I just went over a setup that right now it's just working that's pretty cool I will make an update later I'm a bit tired I don't mind if I don't trade this one just you know again I don't want to be crazy um, I tend to lose money on Fridays um, even though I'd be up in theory 70 bucks <laughs> with my um, PUGE morning panic bounce play but I will make an update and see how this one works out I was on the right track with this right here but you know it just took more time it didn't get to VWAP of course um, like I said already but it's still offered a move from the 540s to the 580s on a pattern that's relatively you know consistent with the way I thought it would trade that it did hold the 540s I'm just you know not very um, comfortable with listed stocks because they just can just flash a freaking big red candle and OTCs don't necessarily do stuff like that let's see if this thing plays out or if this is all it can do ideally it can do more but I'm not in the setup it's just in theory what it could do just trying to get experience it's not like you have to trade every idea that you have in mind. You can just watch it. And sure, it's going to suck if it would have been profitable. And then you get in the next one and that one doesn't work out. But if you're in it for the long run, that's not going to really matter anymore. It is 11.04 a.m. And this thing played out nicely. It got towards VWAP, which is the goal. And didn't it unfortunately break past VWAP. Maybe it'll try to, you know, as it's doing here, downtrend and maybe find a bottom somewhere and then break it later. But I mean, it got to VWAP at 595. 
and that was pretty cool this thing worked out I tried here for this dip buy towards multi-day support it worked just you know not when I was really in it it was the next move when um, it went back towards the levels and it kind of held higher than this range right here so it made a nice run and this was an inverse head and shoulder shoulder head shoulder again not the cleanest because the head isn't necessarily lower than the um, left shoulder but it did it it offered a move and I just want to see how profitable I would have been I still have this thing saved seven shares at 556 that's 38 dollars and 92 and if I were to have sold let's just say at uh, let's just say 580 at the bid right now um, probably you know would have sold some in pieces or maybe have gone out completely here let's just say 577 38.92 would have made just like a dollar and what 41 cents or something like that a dollar 40 a cents not very much obviously but I think that would have been a very nice percent gain and that is again because I am trading a very tiny four dollar risk level so same setup you could trade with a forty dollar risk level which would be you know 70 shares or 400 if you're you know trading even larger than that but I like trading where I am right now because I'm not necessarily if you ask me profitable trading listed stocks because I, don't, I just don't trade them that much I have more experience with LTC's I like LTC's more wow imagine being greedy not selling at VWAP that, that would have sucked but this thing can obviously try to turn around at any point but I don't like how it kind of broke under this range right here so that's very nice it offered a move there inverse hand and shoulders did buy towards multi-week support I will make an update later to see how this one continues but that was a nice setup I didn't take it but I don't mind that I didn't take it I'm actually happy that I'm on the right track and sure if I keep seeing that I'm right more consistently I'll be more um, motivated to trading and you know that that will be in favor all right, it is 8 o'clock p.m. and I am here to call it off. I'm happy that I had one real trade with BFRI. And as for what did this one do, it did have that little uh, downtrend right here. I think that was the last recording. And then it did one more shot past VWAP. If I had somehow of still have been holding shares, which I doubt it because I probably would have sold right under VWAP right here, everything. If I were to have still have held, it did hold, you know, it bounced. Dude, I would have been completely out, absolutely out, right at this range. Because there's no way I'd be trying to hold it any longer unless I just happen to get so greedy. And what happens when you're greedy? You end up losing money. So <laughs> that was the idea there, the inverse head and shoulders and my setup here that ultimately worked out. I guess I was just one dip a little too early. And um, I did trade PUGE, paper trading. It looks like spaghetti now, but there was actually a setup there. I would have made, I think, 70 bucks, maybe 50 bucks. I don't know. Um, after commissions with TD Amita Trade, had I have actually have traded that with real money, I'll be genuinely disappointed if I'm not able to trade on Fidelity if the cash is still not settled on Monday. That would be so sad. And um, yeah. Hopefully that isn't the case. Hopefully I am able to trade on Fidelity. I'm happy I was able to end it with another <laughs> another green day. I mean, in theory, it would have been pretty profitable today. Although that was a $100 risk trading PUGE as well as yesterday. So those things are going to be in the consideration. I think I might add those paper trades to my journal. Obviously, I won't count it as money earned but it was something that I would have traded had I been able to trade with a real account maybe not as much size but definitely I would have traded and yep that's really all I have and um, I look forward to Friday and God willing I can be able to trade all TC's on Monday